Hey guys, how's it going? I know it's been about over a year since my last Harry video and like almost a year since my last actual video on YouTube. But believe me, I have been wanting to make videos for some time now. I've just been really busy. I even work like part time as a programmer using Tari. I've been using Tari for two years now. So, you know, I know what I'm doing to some extent. So I really want to share these videos or make these videos for you. This video was actually going to be made next week, but I said, you know what? Why am I being lazy? I should just make it today because today was such a bad day. I almost failed my midterm, actually passed it, but that's only because of, uh, you know, some baseline skill level. You know, if you don't study for a midterm, you're probably not going to do well or feel good about your results. But anyways, I've been working on this template, you know, that I've shared with you guys for over two years ago since March 2022. Like, I can't even think about that. That's been almost two years now. That's crazy. So it's almost been two years since my last, like, first video on Tauri. And, you know, things have been really cool since then. And I've been working on the template, even though I haven't been updating videos. And uh, yeah, today we'll be doing some uh, Rust to JavaScript event handling. And what I mean by that is suppose you have a long running thread and, uh, you know, it does stuff in the background and you want to update your front end. How do you do that? So let me discard all my changes so that we get a fresh start. And uh, now let's get started. So of course I've refactored my entire code base or my template so that things are very simple nowadays. But let's start with uh, our file. So go to your utility file or whatever you want to, where you define your long running thread. If you are from Google, that's what I mean. But if you're just like a viewer, you want to make sure you're creating a utility file and then create a Tauri command just for like some baseline template just to speed up typing. And we want to create a function signature like this. Okay. So what is going on here is that we have a, we have our function that's going to be doing all the work. Okay. That was just called long running thread. It's going to take in the app of the Tauri app handle, and we're going to do some stuff. And usually by doing stuff forever or in the background, that's usually a loop. Now, the loop can be abstract in a way, of course, but let's just say it's a loop for now because I don't actually have anything for you. And let's define a struct really quickly on uh, a long running thread struct a message string. And then make sure to derive serialize okay and serialize is an import from surd but you guys should know that already by now and uh, yeah so we have this what do we do we actually need to sleep so how do we sleep here well here comes cargo add tokyo so make sure you're in the source tower directory before you do this so when we add it we can go to cargo.toml and we want to add a feature as well. So we, the feature we want is called time. And I'm not exactly sure what the... I think it's something like this, but... Okay, I basically got it. So, you know, uh, I'm good enough. And uh, over here, we need to import the duration module as well. So we can either use autocomplete or we can do it ourselves. You know, this is my third time making this video. And the second time I did it, I could get the import correctly. So, you know, I don't even need the autocomplete too much anymore for that. And we've slapped. But now what do we do? We actually need to say, hey, tell our window that we have an event. So we'll do let window equals app.get window. And then let's use our label, okay? Now, in Rust, we have functional programming as well. So you can either use and then, or you could use, uh, just do something like, something like this. I mean, if, if I was really proficient at functional programming in Rust, like chaining and everything, I would probably do it that way. But, you know, I'm not that good. And it just looks, it just, it just doesn't look that well anymore, right? So... Uh, we can we can do or or we could do this right. Let uh, underscore equals and then we 
long running thread. And then our payload is just the I believe we did not do something correctly, but that's fine. No, I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so make sure you're deriving clone and serialize. We need both actually. Hey, and then we don't we can use Rust functional programming. Look how look how cool I am. You know, I'm basically a Rust. I'm I basically I'm an expert in Rust now, right, guys? Okay, I actually don't know what I'm doing. Okay, the <laughs> I am I'm taking the L here. Okay, you know what? They they want me to use the bracket, so I will use the brackets. You know, even though I don't want to, the code is much longer now. But you know, who cares? So we have this now, and uh, you can see that's unused. So we go back to the main. So we can do two things now. We can either show you the main, how do we actually run this, or how do we handle it in the front end. So uh, let's just do the Rust side first so we can just compile at the same time. So in the main file, we want to do, the first thing we want to do is say, hey, we want to use the file called utils. So do mod utils. And then you say use utils and then we're long running threat. So you don't actually have to do this, but it's just easier to call the function directly than to say utils colon colon, the long running thread or colon colon, show item in folder, which guess what? I actually updated recently. So, you know, there's a bug on Linux or on Linux Mint that is. And so I use Dbus directly. And, uh, you know, Linux Mint is because I'm dual booting Linux nowadays. So that's something interesting for you guys to know. So we have long running thread, but how do we actually start it? So let's go to setup over here. So there's two ways. The naive way to do it is like you you call something like this, right? You say app dot handle like this. So this probably won't work. And you know, even when you compile it, it will say it won't work because of something like this. Unused implementer of future, right? So the way I did it, or the way that's kind of recommended as well, is you want to use Towery's runtime. So Cowry actually has an asynchronous runtime and you want to spawn something. And this is where things get tricky because you have no clue how it works, but don't worry, I know how things work. So it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's basically it. You know, my code looks like this. So that's all it is for the back end over here, the, the Towery end. You know, it's kind of, I, I feel like I'd rather call it the towery end, the rather than back end, it just sounds kind of cool in my opinion. The towery end. So after we've done this, you want to go back to the 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 the, the root directory of your project, click yarn start or whatever, and let's work on the front end while that compiles. So in the front end, I've done made some changes since the last time I made a video. I made a lot of changes, but one thing in particular is the event handling. So before we used to add a lot of code over here for, I don't know, like um, just just to event handle properly and on listen at the very end. But now it's very simple. We just do use effect. And as you can see what I've been done for, we create a promise, first of all, and we're just going to say long running red. And then we got payload. Okay. And then we just have to copy paste our return for the unmount section when React unmounts. So some other frameworks might have it like this as well, but it's not too important. What's important is this part, right? The listen, whatever front end you, you actually use, it doesn't really matter. You can figure out how to unlisten or whatever. That's, that's up to you. I use React. And I want to make SolidJS videos in the future, but I don't know SolidJS. So then let's just console.log payload.message. 
Now, obviously, it might be a good idea maybe to like switch to TypeScript in the future, but I'm not really a TypeScript fan. So we just we just go with it, you know. We just we just do our own thing. So as you can see, our code works completely fine, and uh, you know that that's all it is for today. You know, that's basically it. Let me talk some more about some things that we should be doing. Kind of confused here. Oh. I guess we can format this. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, anyways, we can, um, yeah, I think I have to fix the title bar over here because it's completely broken and I have no idea why, but uh, yeah, we will, we will work on that by the time you watch this. So that's it for today. We've uh, talked about Rust of JavaScript. We've talked about what I want to do with some videos I want to make next week. Talked about how to write better Rust code. And yeah, in the future, you know, really want to make these videos for you guys because a lot of them are lacking like AI. But uh, we'll see. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know my voice doesn't even sound the same as it usually does, but. It is what it is, and yeah, see ya.